a little white cloud should and pop up. It, yep. And now above it says we're recording. So we okay. are. We All right. Have a great, great meeting. Thanks, well, Angela. Having, sure. Thanks, Angela. I'm Thanks, having, Angela. Thank you. Uh, before we start, I will uh, remind us pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 38, section 18 of this meeting uh, of the participatory budgeting commission is being conducted by a remote participation. So um, we are obligated to take a roll call of naming each individual, which I will um, do now. Uh, Kathy Shane. Here. John Fenske. Here. John Page. Here. Liz Larson. Here. Holly Bowser. I'm here. Meg Gage. Okay, We're calling the meeting to order at 3.34. Um, it suggests in these instructions that um, if you're gonna have a lot of background noise, you mute yourself except when you're speaking. Um, <clears throat> And uh, let's jump right in and look at the agenda. Um, <clears throat> um, I wanna just say, first of all, before we start this, I see this as a meeting to get, um, to organize our plan for going forward. What's our plan with the memo that we're writing? What's our plan in terms of getting input from both key town and committee uh, leaders, as well as from the public and uh, the timeline for getting this done by uh, beginning of June. Um, so I also, not on the agenda, but related to that, I, I want to plan our next, schedule our next two meetings, uh, which we can get to when we get to topics the chair did not reasonably identify. Um, I think we'll probably only, well, let's just do that right now. I think we'll probably only have one meeting in December. Our next meeting in December is the, oh, is the um, 10th. And two weeks after that is New Year's Christmas Eve, so I suggest that we don't have that one. Hi, John. Hi, I'm now, I'm just, I was there for a second, and now I'm gone again. Let me... Oh, we see you. Okay, I don't see you, but I will in a second. There you are. Hello. Yeah, Hi. you're here for us. I'm suggesting that we meet, uh, we keep our schedule of December 10th, and the next meeting would be yeah. January 7th, which is um, because of the holidays in there. So that means between now and January 7th, we would have this meeting and one in between. So that um, does that make sense to people? What's the date again? I'm sorry. Uh, so January. Do Just do it again, Meg. December 10th, you 7th. said? December, December 7th? December 10th, we're going to, yeah, 10th. December 10th, December um, 10th. And that's the date we picked. Uh, and actually missing a meeting last week and having it this week instead means we're having our next meeting in two weeks rather than in three weeks. So if we keep that meeting we'd schedule because I know some of us have busy Thursdays and we've planned on it. Two weeks after that is Christmas Eve. So I'm suggesting that we have our subsequent meeting after December 10th on January 7th, which is the Thursday. Sure. We don't have to decide that this instant, but um, I think it's helpful for some of us anyway to have meetings ahead on the calendar so that we can plan around them. I don't know why there's so much going on on Thursday afternoon. But okay, um, at this meeting, we are not going to we are not going to approve the minutes. We'll do that at the next meeting. Uh, we've had a really high standard for minute taking, especially for a committee that where the volunteers do their own minutes. Uh, and many committees and boards have not done that. Um, so we need to be a little, I think we should be gentle on ourselves. We're all very busy. Uh, John McCabe has agreed to take minutes at this meeting. Sure. Thank you. And uh, number three on the agenda, let's take a look at the agenda just to review it and see if it's what we uh, have in mind. I see three goals, discuss and amend the consistent, the consensus, the outline. The, the Can paper. you throw it up on the screen? Yep. Thanks. I'm gonna do that. Oh, you'll see my comments to myself in here, but that's okay. Uh, the red is my, my uh, notes to myself. Um, I see three goals, the work on uh, the, 
the document that we're that's moving along that Kathy's uh, shepherding helpfully <clears throat> to start planning the conversations with key town staff and committees. My feeling is that we need to start planning that so we get on people's schedules. And I have a proposal think, that Kathy actually made uh, for how to do that efficiently. And then to just rough out a timeline so we don't run out of time. We have plenty of time, but not if we don't um, use it well. Well, I mean, suddenly it's gonna be January. And so do those seem like uh, reasonable goals for this meeting? Sure. Hearing no objection. Are there any other comments on the agenda? I, I just have one, Meg. Um, I, I think, think I think the timeline is pretty important um, to have a discussion on, as is uh, this idea of how we go out to town staff. So I'm wondering if we want to talk about those two before we go to the draft. Um, just, you know, just so we don't run out of time if we get bogged down with um, sentence massaging. Um, yeah. I love that because we can massage sentences right up until May. <laughs> uh, I'm very happy. Is that okay with people if we take um, five and six and move them up to four? Hearing no objection. Any other comments? This is really helpful uh, in, on the agenda. Okay, so thank you, Kathy, for that suggestion. Um, so shall we, so let's talk about um, brainstorming town staff and committees to interview for input between now and June 1st. So it's actually between now and April or something like that. Um, because we obviously can't wait until then, but um, we'll just, never mind. I won't be editing that. Um, Kathy made a really great suggestion, which, uh, is helps us be more efficient and would take uh, less of our collective time. And I think would allow more candid conversations, uh, which is instead of having public meetings with key town staff and um, maybe committee chairs and different key people who are related to budget work that we identify two or it could even be three. It has to be a, not a quorum of our group to carry out those uh, conversations and bring reports back to the committee. Kathy, do you wanna say more about, this is what the council did. Do you wanna say more about this yeah, idea? Yeah, we just, um, it, it's, uh, I think I, I'd say at least two. So there, there are uh, two, pe two people hearing the conversation, not just one. We did it with a, the percent for art bylaws. We started working on it. We got permission from the larger group to go and make sure we worked through some details with Sonia and then brought back what Sonia had that were around financing. And then, um, then more recently with the wage, uh, wage theft bylaws, um, we were asked by the larger council, we had, in this case, there were sponsors of the bylaw to go meet with town staff to find out how much work, you know, how did they think what we were proposing was feasible for them to do? Were there any concerns they had in terms of their own functions? And we brought that information back then to the council. So we didn't have to invite in the human resource director or a procurement officer to a public meeting and we just, uh, took notes and reported back um, and and made, in that case, you were, we were talking about um, authoring bylaws, but the changes in them were made only in the public meeting of the group. You know, it was coming back, we think this sentence is problematic and here's some ways of changing it. So we did all of that back as a group, not separately, you know, so it was, going out, getting information, getting reactions. So I had thought um, we've got different people. So the example would be the uh, resident capital request. The key person there is Paul, because uh, he's the, and it's probably Paul, Paul, Sean Magnano, because they staff the capital requests and Paul has complete control over the capital budget. 
And then the other one, uh, community participation uh, group. Um, there is a chair of that group. Um, and then there's one person, I think, on that committee. So I'm not, so it might be the chair plus, in this case, it might be Sonia or Holly, you, you know, the, the staffing and the people who know the law really well. So it's like to get the committee view on CPAC, but also get the, you can't do this view or, you know, the law would stop, you know, so it's like what key town staff person um, would that be? So it was the, the idea is that it's only meeting with a couple other people rather than the entire CPAC group, which would be a public meeting just on a first reactions. And I have no idea. And I have no idea for the the last potential source, um, but I just started with those two in my head. Yeah. Holly, do you have your hand up? Uh, no, sorry. Okay. No, sir. <laughs> um, do my microphone have... is up here, so I'm trying to mute and unmute, and and I when I put my hand up, it's for my microphone. <laughs> so, do people uh, have questions about this approach or what? Um, does do people good. understand? Does it sound make sense? <clears throat> Yeah, I think it I think it makes sense. And certainly when it comes to budget process and or CPA, th those would be things where I can certainly help out and volunteer to do those ones because I have a little inside knowledge. Yeah, well, there's an advantage to the same two or three people doing all of them um, because they would have consistency and they would have, uh, it's also important to have at least two or maybe three who maybe don't have the same perspective. Although I think we're reaching consensus on our, our document. Um, but do people like this, first of all, this approach of having a subcommittee of us meet with a subcommittee of the committees and the end or with the individual in case of Paul? I like the idea, but I think what we need to do is have um, all of us need to, we need to figure out a way to pair up into each, each of us will take so we, we need to have overlap between the committees. It can't be the same three people doing all of this work. We need to have overlap just to really spread it out and make sure that all of our voices are, are heard and included. And as long as we're all coming up with, we come up with the same kind of questions like we did for the, um, when we were talking to the, uh, the, other, the other cities, the other towns, you know, if we, we come up with something like that. So let's talk about what Liz just said, because it's a little different from what I proposed and I think Kathy proposed, the, which is, I'm just gonna distinguish the two points and we'll discuss them. One is to have the same people do all of the interviews because they would compare them in a similar way, use similar language, uh, and there would be less chance of misunderstanding. On the other hand, having all of us participate in different combinations uh, would be more participatory. It would give everybody a chance to have their uh, perspective reflected in how these interviews happen. So let's discuss those two approaches. Does that clear what they are? Yeah. Um, Kathy? I just want to put one in either scenario. Um, my th thinking would be that before we sent the team out, um, we would come together and say, what key questions do we want at ask? And we would frame, we, we would frame the discussion, um, you know, uh, you know, and, and it would be different for I'll just resident capital requests is like, um, you know, Paul, would you ever in your wildest dreams dream of some agree to something like this? You know, I'm, I'm that's not phrasing it quite right, <laughs> but um, you know, um, but but it's brainstorm about you know, four or five things that we actually want to to specifically be asking, um, and then the conversations will flow. So I think in either scenario, I think we should do that. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's a different yes. team for one purpose and a different team from the other. So, John, <clears throat> I have a question about. Uh, you might call it mechanics or logistics. Would we have to set things up uh, the same way this meeting set up and have recordings, or would these be informal zooms? They'd be informal zooms. The advantage of not having a quorum mm -hmm. is that you can have a, a, a more back and forth, authentic conversation. You don't need to have an agenda or minutes. Okay. 
we could record them if people wanted to, but um, my opinion is the advantage of having them not recorded is there's more opportunity for candor. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me add right away one thing, one disadvantage I see to the dedicated subcommittee as opposed to Liz's uh, suggestion of uh, <clears throat> having uh, 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 various overlapping groups is it would mean an awful lot of work for that dedicated right. subcommittee. I'll no, just, just say that while I presented one, the one that's different from Liz's, I'm neutral on this question myself. Kathy? And I was just gonna say the, when I, you know, since none of us, almost none of us are seeing each other in person anymore, um, one of the things the town has used is a Microsoft product called Teams and it comes with a mic, you know, so it's, it, it feels a little bit like this and that you know, you're seeing a face, um, but it's a lot less formal. Um, so it would be a way of having a conversation with two other people, two people having a conversation with two other people. Um, because you know it's in the world I was talking about, we could actually go into the room with the people and meet, sit with them across their desks, but that that time is not here with us anymore. Um, Other comments on these two approaches? Okay, with de um, <clears throat> delegating it to two people. I mean, John, I don't know how much work it would be. Um, I mean, was, am I remembering right, Meg? Didn't we do a couple of these, the, you, just you and I with a couple of academics somewhere? And it wasn't a big deal. We, you know, we, we met with them for an hour, what, an hour and 50, half an hour, hour and a half, something like that, and quickly took notes. And um, I think it's important that ev everybody have input on the questions for sure. But at the actual, how many people are you talking about meeting with? Um, you well, just mentioned a couple. Well, it's probably more than a couple. Would it be help? Do we feel ready to make a decision about how we're going to do this, or should we go to uh, what the questions might be? And uh, well, could could we initially list the? Um, I, I think I saw a list of these people somewhere, but you know, could we name yeah, good the idea. the various people or groups of people you you okay. think should be interviewed? Let's okay. do that now. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll do it again, um, at least off the top of my head. So for dollar source number one, um, the resident capital request. The so um, hold on a sec. Can I suggest that somebody do a screenshot and then write type these in so that we're all looking and, and we're all making sure, sure we capture everybody? Sure. I, you, I, Meg, you're recording this, right? It's so I, I can go oh. back and do the minutes. Um, yeah. So you just you just email me a copy of it. Is that how it works? Okay, I'm I'm going there. I can yeah, Liz, share. I'm opening, I'm opening up a blank word page. I can do it. I just did. Oh well. Okay, thank you. Oh, did you do it, Meg? Yeah. Okay, then I'll come back to Zoom. Okay. Okay. So for the first one is resident capital request. I thought of the. The two key people, or the, the one key person is Paul Bachman. Okay, because mm -hmm. um, even for the council, so resident capital, for even for the council, he has the final say over the capital budget. Um, so it goes through JCPC. The staff person on capital is Sean Magnano. So whether Sean also has to be, and I, and I wouldn't, and it's S-E-A-N, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't meet with them separately. This would be meet with the two of, you know, get the two of them. Um, Is there anyone else in that group, Kathy? I don't think there's anybody else. Um, I am chair of JCPC, the committee. But as I said, you know, we can't, there wouldn't be, it could at some point come to the committee and say, what do you think of this idea? But the committee could not make this decision um, uh, in any way. Um, be helpful to have their input on whether this is a good idea or how it might work or how well, the how the public could have more input well JCP, jcpc has two people from schools two people from libraries two people three people from the council it's staffed by sean and it's not meeting until february 
and that would have to be a public meeting. I see no way to do individual interviews with the school representatives, the library representatives, the town. Right. So I, I just don't think I would even talk to anyone on JCPC because this, the, the key, there is a key group called the council at some point, this is gonna to have to go to the council. So I, I wouldn't put it down as a place to go, Meg, in my opinion. Okay, I'm just putting it here. But I'm wondering if, uh, if there's any way we can have a conversation about how the public might have input into the joint capital plan. I mean, for this, for example, I, I am 100% convinced that if they had a public referendum on the four capital projects, there would be a broad consensus about this priority of the schools, for example. And uh, just so you know, the four big projects are not going to come to JCPC at all. Okay, forgot. No, right. I'm just, I'm just, I wouldn't even make it a number two because I don't. <sighs> It's an advisory committee to the town manager um, that's on things like roofs. But yes, if we tried to make the resident capital request more robust, have some constraints around it, it would have they would have to at some point go through JCPC. But I just I don't I think it'd be a waste of time to try to talk to that committee per se. Um, okay. I just wonder if they might have some insight into um, how, you know, right now it all has to go through Paul and Sean or, you know, goes there, but if they have some insight of, you know, what would be better, like how we would prefer to see it that we could yeah. then incorporate into our recommendations. So if there is a way that, you know, you could have brief conversation with someone from the library and someone from the schools. Well, the only thing is, Liz, it's written into the charter um, that JCPC sits and meets and puts out an advisory report, and then the town manager puts together the, the capital budget and brings it to the council. So, so but what I'm suggesting it, it, is that they might have some feedback on, you know, right. how that doesn't work. So, because we're doing something that's, you know, if if down the road there would be right. a new uh, PBC written, we would want to incorporate what wasn't working at the JCPC because it was written into the charter and make sure that it's not written into, you know, just looking right. farther down. I agree with Liz because it might, we're not necessarily changing governmental structure. I mean, we we're trying to get creative ideas about how the public could have meaningful participation. And some of those, I think they might have some ideas. What do other people think, John? Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. That's um, I was just, John Page. <laughs> I can't see. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say, and we can, we can put JCPC maybe at the bottom of our list and come back to it if it's going to be a sticking point. But um, my question for JCPC, which maybe Kathy can explain to us in a meeting or, um, but also for CPA and for CDBG, just for us to discuss how they make their decisions. I know, for example, CPA uses um, ranking as an initial step. Um, CDBG uses an elimination process to narrow the pool. So I just think maybe one of the questions for those committees that's valuable is how do you make your decisions? Um, yeah. Because I think that's a, actually a question I would, I, I would be curious, you know, what matrix do you use or what process do you use to make decisions? So for that reason, I. I it might be complicated to do, but I think it might be valuable to ask them that question. Okay, so the them includes me. I'm the chair right. of the committee. Um, right. And well, the them would not include you at the moment. Then, for <laughs> no, no, no. So I'm just you would get. Um, I I think that's a great idea and a description of how it's done. And just to give you the very quick thumbnail, Chris is the people proposing the capital requests, uh, whether it's the fire department or the police rank it by very high priority, priority. Um, and so the first set of screens is to look at the very high priorities. And then the individual members come back with um, some, we only have so much money um, and some ideas. 
and then went and then wait a minute let me i'll give you the last thing because alex lefebvre who's the person from the library um the first time i just sat through this then the town manager comes in at the next meeting and throws that out and says here's the here's the list and we get to spending all the money this way and i go whoa and alex said welcome to jcpc <laughs> you know that you know what you know if if we were always going to spend 2 million on roads and we weren't going to buy these trucks and these vehicles you know then why did we go through agonizing about this truck versus that truck versus these things um so Alex might be a good person to talk to about this um, because she's been on it for a number of years. Um, I don't know how to spell her name. It's L-E and then F-E-B-R-E, -E, I think. But, I'll, you know, we can fix up the spelling. Yeah, right. These are notes. But, I, you know, I'd put that. But it, as I said, it's it's a group. Then you've got the two people from schools who who this they were just they've only been on it one year and we had a totally different year this the one year they were on it where we didn't rank any projects because we didn't have any money you know so schools wouldn't be worth talking to right now andy's been on it for years but um sean was the financial director for the district and sean so is he yes, does have some background <laughs> yeah you know so sean okay. is completely the right uh, right person because he was there when it was coming out of the schools you know and how did the schools feel as they put up capital things on the decisions that were made about their capital requests? So Sean, mm -hmm. Sean is a perfect person, Liz, particularly for that, because he's been on both sides of mm -hmm. final yes. decisions yeah. and shepherding them through. So Andy, Andy Steinberg of, on the council has been on JCPC in his past pre-council life, as well as continued on now. Um, and just one word on it, he came close to, but it, we didn't go that way of suggesting we drop resident capital requests. They opened it up as experimental and let's try this. And, and it was, well, we don't know how to handle these. So maybe we shouldn't do it anymore. So, you know, his perspective on resident capital requests would probably be a good one to get. Um, Absolutely. You know, you know, how, you know, so, so he's, he'd be a good person to be talking to. Um, okay. Doug Slaughter still there? No, Doug, Doug is um, not, he is now the finance person for the schools. Right, right, right. You know, so he, he would be the Sean Magnano perspective now on how does it work when I'm coming up with um, capital <clears throat> requests. Yeah, he's on the other side of the table now. Yeah. So just the second one I was going to do instead of the, I mean, if you can put a two under the resin is CPA. Right. I had a two there originally. Okay. So the CPA, I thought the chair, and that's Sarah Marshall. Um, so, so Holly on staffing, you staff it. Anthony staffs it. Sonia comes in when we need her. Yeah. <laughs> so it just feels to me it's like we've got. And then last few meetings, Sean has been listening in on it. But is if is there a is Sonia the one who knows CPA the best? Sonia is the one who knows CPA the best. She um, has really been on it the longest and is much more familiar with the laws and the rules than the rest of us. Um, you know, me and Anthony have sort of been tag teaming that committee depending on what else is going on in our in our other work so Sonia really is the best and I would probably suggest her okay also also if we have three people doing the interviews Holly shouldn't be one of the people we interview because technically that would be a quorum of our our commission okay so I was just going to say one more person on CPA Sam McLeod who's a CPA member he and he's the chair. What? He's vice chair, I think. Well, but the key thing about Sam is he's heading the outreach committee, trying to figure out how they can get more proposals coming in from residents, how they can use um, a face Facebook um, advance notice more, you know, to not not have almost all the proposals come from the same sources all the time. So. 
he's been thinking about that on behalf of CPAC. Um, and so he has a that perspective on it. Um, so that's why I thought of the current members, um, he, and I forget who else is on, it's a little subcommittee, uh, Holly, you may know, but I know Sam is, he opened, re reopened up the Facebook page, you know, thinking of, thinking of things like if a project is funded by CPAC, put a, the way um, the concert, the way uh, the biggies, the parks say, this land was brought to you by so-and-so, you know, your tax dollars at work, trying to think of the, getting the word out, what is this committee and it's your tax dollars. So I just would put him, and that's that's not quite the way he spells his name, but we can fix it. Yeah, I can't it. remember, it's might be M-A-C. M -A -C. And it's got an E somewhere in it, doesn't it? Yeah, um, that's all right. We'll think. Yeah, but we'll we'll get these. These are just our. So that's um, then the yeah, next right. the next one, Liz. You know the next one better than I do because your husband's on it. The community, the community, <laughs> the block grant. CDBG. Yeah. Yeah. Community Development Block Grant. Yep. So it would be Nate Malloy, who is the staff person and sort of the our resident expert on that. Mm -hmm. um, Nate Malloy and... Gail Lansky's the chair. Yeah, who? Not... Gail, Gail Lansky? Gail Lansky. Oh, cool. That's very cool. Um, and, you know, there are, there are recently some new people on it, so they may not be the best um, to talk to. I know that um, Andrew, whose last name I don't know, but he's Melissa's husband. <laughs> Grant Thomas? Oh. Yeah, Grant Thomas, Andrew. yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, thank you. Wait, wait, who's who? Andrew Grant Thomas, Meg, you know, as you know well, right? Yeah, um, I just, so that was Gail's husband. I was gonna say, no, it's not. I missed, I missed a beat in there. I got distracted by this amazing sunset. Sorry, um, Andrew goes here. Well, I'm just wondering whether these two, With Nate the and Gail, are, are Nate, Nate and Gail enough? You know, I yeah, wasn't probably. I'm so I wasn't trying to get a ton of names. Uh, the only reason I put through Sam in is because he was supposed to be thinking of how to do outreach. You know, get get it known out there and and gin up some more proposals. But the reason to have Andrew is he's somebody who will care about this. Okay. Who, who will, in other words, if we, depending on, you know, we're, we could just meet stone walls, but to people, we want to have conversations where people are going to be open to thinking creatively about what's possible, not fantasizing or delusional ideas, but trying to be creative the way I think. It's, it's okay with me. It's, it's, he's cares. If he, if he. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. If he both knows it well enough and might be supportive of thinking of alternative ways of doing things, I mean, they will, Gail and Nate would certainly know what the process is, you know, what, what the process uh -huh. and what the constraints are. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is the one, by the way, and even though I way back when wrote it down in that memo, um, this is the one where I see the most barriers and challenges to thinking of opening it up much more because it's so narrowly confined and it goes through a state, uh, it has to be approved by the state as well. You know, it's just got a series of screens on it that doesn't lend itself as much. Um, but it would also be nice to get an idea of their process yep. because whatever yep. process we have or is eventually, you know, recommended, you don't want to have four different processes for four different, if, if there's a way to streamline it and make them at least, you know, similar. Yeah. So that would be a, a useful thing. Yep. And there may be things they haven't thought of. I mean, we're, you know, we're not going to propose this traditional participatory budgeting program that asks the town to shell out a lot of money. There may be, for example, interest in a non-binding referendum. Uh, especially because of some of this technology we know about now that doesn't require all the rigmarole of a, an actual official election. Um, but they may be open to different ways of gathering opinions and input uh, that they haven't thought of. 
Yeah, I like, I, we should, I agree, yeah. We should remember sure. that, uh, that free software that's available from Berkeley uh, for, for voting. So that raises awesome. two, two groups for me. Um, and I don't know how, how much time we want to spend with each one, but uh, the community participation officers, we've heard from them, yeah. mm -hmm. but um, we might want to go back to them. And then um, I'm not sure how, but maybe we incorporate the schools, uh, the, the higher education institutions. Um, I'm not sure the best person to start that conversation with, but somebody from the university or Amherst College or even, even Hampshire. I think that's a great idea, John. You know, the other uh, the question yes. is, where, where, who's, how do you get in? I mean, maybe, maybe start with external relations and then see if you get some academics that are interested. I also think that you know what Liz Liz has said as we went through this. Um, some of this with the first three is how do you make your decisions? How do you rank? So we're collecting how do and how. If you could do it differently, what what would you think would be a better process? You know, so we're not just talking about a money source. So that then works. CPO. These are, to, in my mind, that we're. St I'm starting to think these, there are different kinds of questions we're asking. There's some that's around the source, and there's some's about how do you go about doing something if you wanted to um, talk about ranking, and then the, this last is how do you get public input. Um, what are different ways of getting public input? So there are different clusters of questions. <laughs> yeah, Kathy, to that, I would add, yeah. once, once you get, once you add in higher education um, to beat my hobby horse a little bit, ask them if, you know, try, try to elicit from them, are there ways that, that are there ways or people that they can identify who might want to be part of some of this whole thing? And, um, and perhaps even support it financially on, on some level. But um, Eric Beal used to have a position with some like neighborhood liaison in the town and the university. I don't think he's in that anymore. Do they still have that position at UMass or has that been taken over by someone else? Does Tony Maroulis plays that role a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they filled Eric's position, but Tony for sure. And I mean, just throwing it out there is uh, Paul Musgrave, who serves as one of our, or did, or did he move? He was serving as one of our licensed commissioners, but um, he's a political scientist and he's got some interesting research on, I think, polling and information like that. He might be someone to pick his brain John, um, from the academic side. Did you say his name again? Paul Musgrave. Oh, Paul Musgrave. Uh -huh. There are some famous economists whose last name was Musgrave. I wonder if he's a relationship to them. Hmm. Could reach out to to. Um, <clears throat> uh, it wouldn't just have to be poli sci, but but that's a good place to start. Maybe public policy too. But reach out to chairs and see if, is there anybody in your is there anybody in your full time group that's that's pointing in this direction in the first place. I mean, who knows? Because we, I mean, for UMass, they've got an, they've got an enormous number of full-time faculty. Sometimes I can't believe, as a former administrator at CUNY, I can't believe how many people they have. But that's, that's a good thing for us because there's bound to be somebody who's interested. Mm -hmm. At Amherst College. Woman at Amherst College. Uh, Mel Molly Mead, I've spoken to her class and she's already been in touch with me this year. Uh, she'd like to have her students involved in uh, right. uh, local politics. So I'll put her up here. Was that what, you, what were you gonna say, Liz? No, I'm trying to remember her name is Sarah, Sarah Barr. And she, I don't know if she's still at Amherst College. She may not be exactly the right person, but she's someplace. <sighs> can't remember, but whenever I have a question about reaching out and reaching into the, the uh, student body there, I, she's a friend and so I always reach out to her, <laughs> but I can't remember what her position is other than she, her office is at the uh, student center. I think she's community outreach. So if we can, I think she's the right person. Okay. I wonder if she's 
never mind. I, I answered my question I was going to ask. Ah, can't type. Okay, so going back to the committees up here, what do we, we have uh, resident capital requests. Is there anybody else who would be helpful in the conversation than Paul and Sean? Nope. CPA, Sarah and Sonia and Sam. Uh, CBD, uh, CDBG, Nate, Gail and Andrew. Are there other, uh, any other places where there's the possibility of public participation in something related to a, to a budget? Well, we have these uh, charter mandated forums and there's the requirement that the public speak at least as much as the um, as the town town officials. So this is Meg, you know, just I just think this is like the topics down below as opposed to the people, you know. Um, so I, it, 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 you can make notes this way. It's fine because it is a people do or don't come and they do or don't speak. Um, so there is one tonight, for example. Um, what? Uh, on budget the, forum. A budget forum tonight. Yeah. Really? Wow. And, uh, and so a CPA meeting and a human rights commission meeting and a Democratic uh, party meeting all at the exact same time. Yeah, CPAC yeah. meets tonight. Yeah, no, so and so that's that's problematic, but the very first one um, was really painful because all the council sat up on stage with Paul and several staff, and it, we were not supposed to talk for very long, and more than half the time was supposed to be used by people. So we just sat there, and we had to sit there for half an hour <laughs> in silence. I mean, it was real. And then one or two people thought this is ridiculous in the audience, and they just started asking questions. You know, but it wasn't burning questions. It was like. They're, they're literally just gonna sit there. Um, it, it's, it's gotten better whenever there's a big issue, mm -hmm. you know, um, a, 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 an issue that has some level of controversy around it. But the other, the other yeah. reality is that people show up if there's an organizing body that lets them know these you know, groups, the newsletter, I mean, this is another whole approach from talking to townspeople. Maybe we don't even wanna go there, but uh, you can get people to meetings, but you have to do have a community organizing approach. Let them know what's happening. Let them know why it's relevant. What what time the meeting is, uh, and that whole area isn't happening. But that may not be our mandate. I think but that's right. Maybe in a conversation with the yeah with the CPOs, it could be you know outreach. Um, I, I, for past project, we identified something like 12 or 15 neighborhood email lists, for example. Uh, Amherst Woods has one, Echo Hill has one, the uh, Overlook Drive area up there has one, and people communicate with each other. Some, some of them have game night. Uh, so they're just, and then there are something, you know, 20 or 25 different organizations as well as senior let's, center. Let's think about what our questions. Outreach. Yeah, let's I've, think what our questions might be. And then see one if more. There are some groups, uh, community groups that we might want to reach out to, like the League of Women Voters or something like that. But let's look at what our questions would be and see if those are the kind of thing that would be appropriate. That's to, helpful. Excuse uh, me, though. There was I looked at um, a draft uh, timeline that you had sent out at one point. And you mentioned there a town council president. Does that make sense? Sure. Well, what do you all think? Well, now nah, let's cut Lynn out. I'll, I'll defer well, that I, one to I, Kathy. I, I, I just, <laughs> here, here was my initial thought. Um, we've got a draft of a memo, a, 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 and it's got three parts to it. So we've started going into parts two and three in some of these things, which is fine, because um, you'd ask different questions about how do you do public referendums? How do you get the university involved? Those are different. But 
the the initial part of start the ball rolling with some money is the the identified sources were one, two, and or three. Um, and we need to know sooner rather than later whether there is any possible way to do those and know what what the you can't do it or and to know what the roadblocks are or that whole first part of the memo has got to be recast um right you know so i had that as something that we had to you know suppose we go out to the public and they just love it you know or something oh you're great what wonderful ideas but we we say oh it's except that we can't do it um would not be a good way so i thought those first three things is trying to figure out both how do they do what they now do would there be any room for carving out some money and soliciting more residents coordinating even in the times they're open for proposals then there's a whole nother set it is the set of questions that of how do we get more participation? How do you do referendums? Is there a role for academia? It's a whole set of questions. The league, um, you know, people get involved when there's an issue that they can have an impact on, as you've said, you know, have some voice. Um, tonight's is how much money do we have? <laughs> you know, there's no decisions being made tonight. It's it's kind of a briefing. It's you know, that EC 101 that the town probably needs and how much money do we have? Where does it come from? How do we spend it? Um, so I just, I, that's what I initially thought that the initial set of going out, but I like the idea of also going out on our other topics, um, you know, and then it lends to Liz's idea of different subsets of us are going out on different, are going out to talk to different people, so. So let's uh, let's try to John. I just had one more. I think um, building on Kathy's point of of um, is this realistic? Is at some point Anthony Delaney and I know he's involved with CPA, I believe. So he might we might talk to him in that capacity. But as procurement officer, he might say, "Oh, that's never going to work for." CDBG, or that's never going to work for CPA, but this might. So uh, Anthony Delaney might be a good person to check for a real, like reality check. Um. Good. Um, so, so let's just um, tell with fascism. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that was in my front yard for the last month, but I decided to take <laughs> I had a roofer coming over. I didn't want him to leave a couple of holes in my roof, you know. Yep, right. Um, so I'm trying to move us, want to move us along because we also want to talk about our timeline and who's going to be these outreach people. Um, um, I Does someone want to take, the, so we've got here a good list of people to talk to. We just barely started on the questions. Uh, before I forget, can I can I throw this out there for the questions? I, I love what Liz just said about um, talking to the committees. And I think that a really important question and is to ask like what works and what doesn't work, because I think that the committees are going to be our experts on that. So I think that's a that's a great opening question. Well, right. I would say so more generally, it's it's good to start with a, a blue sky open-ended question to let yeah. them tell us what they think um, in the general area of participatory budgeting makes sense or what they'd like to see or what creative idea they might have uh, and then drill down into the specifics. And then if I may add, I think uh, if I'm understanding Kathy correctly, uh, we want to for sure to have a focus on questions that will let us know whether we can go ahead with section A with the three areas, and then we can think about the things that might be useful to elaborating sections B and C. Is that right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And, and I think what Holly was also saying, what works and doesn't in that different of them, CPA is one where they get usually more proposals than they can fund, not every year. You know, so how do they rank? How do they go about making a decision? Do they feel like they have enough information? How how do they wish they could do it? You know, those are great just on, func you know, the functions of them. Um, so 
So uh, I have a okay. suggestion. I just have a suggestion. Um, and I am not volunteering for this. If we take this framework, Meg, that you've just put up there and then questions to ask, would someone like Liz or some two people want to pull together, these are questions to ask of CPA. And in some of them, it could be the same question. Number one is the same of each of these committees, two, three, four. And these are questions we'd want to know from the higher education people, from league-like places, you know, that could, you know, whatever else. So clusters of questions. Would someone want to take a beginning stab at that that we could then all brainstorm over them once they're clustered. Um, I was just gonna make that same suggestion. Liz, do you wanna do that with someone else or not? Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, you know, a, a Virgo who's an organization nut. So yeah, can I color code it too? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Absolutely. <laughs> by the way, now that, now, now that we see how many people we're gonna talk to, I, I'm totally not in, I, I totally think we should have everybody involved. It's too much work for two people. Okay, let's come back to that decision before. Is there someone who would work with Liz? I'm happy to be a sounding board or to, if that would be what with you. Someone else wanna do it? I'm happy to do that. If you do the draft, you're heard of Unfortunately, okay budgets. Budget season is starting right now, and I unfortunately just have way too much on my plate to. I was thinking I I may, but I I can't. Um, yeah, so if I, I I'm ha I'll I'll take a, a stab at it, and then if there's someone who I can bounce it off of, that would that's fine. I just someone's going to have to write up exactly what it is I'm taking a stab at, so that I. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can. I'm I'm happy to do that, and then bounce it off whoever decides to do that. Great. Well, I'm happy to do it if there isn't someone else. I have, I think some of these questions, you'll do a great job, Liz. So is this something we could have a draft by uh, December 10th? Do you think a first draft? Of the questions and yeah. Yeah, even though I'm going into budget season too, but mine is not nearly what Holly's having to deal with, so. Um. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, go back to our group. I'm going to stop sharing. Whoops, what was that? Um, maybe go back to the, okay, let's, um, thank you, everybody. That was great. Do we have consensus that we'll divide this up among all of us in different combinations, but we'll have a framework for reporting back so that we're, um, we're reporting back apples and apples as much as possible. Does that make sense? I th I think that's what we decided. Yeah. yeah. Just checking that because, okay, I don't think we have to vote on this. I'm seeing no objection. Great. So shall we now? Uh, Good question. As a, as a framework for any of these discussions, are you, you're going to distribute the draft of our report to them first and then use that well, as a launch pad for the discussion or some other method? Well, one. When one possibility would be if we can get it down to the one page, maybe one page on two sides. Yeah. You know, we're we're thinking of, you know, a three pronged thing, and prong one has these elements, and we're here to talk to you about this piece of it. You know, prong B has this, and we're here to talk to you about that piece of it, but not the big document. You know, just yeah. Right. Yeah, I would I would plan to do a basically an executive summary of and yeah, I would really try to keep it to one page and just yep. say, you know, let's let's assume nobody knows what PVC is, give a basic, you know, here's three lines on what it is, here's why we're looking at it, and here's why we want to talk to you about it. So, but yeah, so that I, I'll do that in the draft of the questions in the organization. Great, so I'll great. Do that as part of it. So I'd like to share, so um, I'm moving along here because it's already uh, almost 4.30. I'm really glad we're doing this in this order because we wouldn't have gotten to this. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna share the screen now of our timeline um, and see, 
uh, we've had we've had this on our agenda for a few meetings and haven't um, gotten to it. So I uh, would love to have this conversation. Our goal is to complete the recommendation. So December, I'm going to go through the the bulleted points because the points underneath fill it out. But the it's really about these. I mean, not bulleted. The highlighted phrase. So December to February, we confirm the sent confirm the consensus points and draft the memo. Two, we engage relevant committees and individuals um, to test blah, blah, blah. Um, and here are some of the ones that I brainstormed, but let's don't focus just on the bold. And three, we plan the public forums. So between December and February, we're doing these three things. Uh, let's just, uh, I'll just go over the whole thing. Then March, refine our proposal based on all this great input, but we still haven't held the public forums. We're just planning them. And the reason to plan them in December to February is because uh, the outreach that we want to do takes time and uh, getting people to attend whatever forum we have or whatever method of input we create. Maybe we can be creative about how we get public input <laughs> to start showing, demonstrating different ways of participation. Um, then in March, we refine the proposal. So we're taking to the public the refined proposal, not what we start. So the proposal that goes to the public is one that has had feedback from uh, our town's people. April and May, we build support for it, hear feedback, and uh, rewrite the final proposal. This square. We lose Meg. Planned it up in here. We should be able to do it. Yep. So I can't see who has their hand up or spoke. We lost you, you for a second there, Meg. Oh, you lost me. Okay. I'm on a wife. I'm on a hot spot. I'm actually in Maine. But you can do a thing know. if you go up to where view options, you can have the people go down the side of your document. One of the view I options have, up at the top is I have side. That. Oh, okay. But I also, uh, I think I just, so let's, let's discuss uh, this uh, draft timeline uh, and not worry about the bullet points underneath because those we might fill in or not fill in differently. Although if, talk about anything you want, but I want to get some agreement on what, how we're going to pull this off by June 1st. Well, I'm assuming you mean February, 2021. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, I missed that first headline. Go Virgo. Go Virgo. Oh, that was good. <laughs> we can put a 2021 at the okay. top. Okay. So I have a question. Oh. Um, sure. I'm not a, um, about what things have to come before something else. Um, to begin to plan a public forum and get the league or someone else interested. Do we need to have uh, at least a two page document that we're feeling is not gonna change all that much on what we're thinking of doing to share with them? Or can yes. we, do, or we can do it with a one sentence, we're gonna be ready by March to have this, can you commit the time? So that's, you know, right. so, so it's, it's a question of the, in that first part, December through February, Meg, you know, we, the parts that we haven't done, we've just done some nodding our heads toward is um, how crazy are the ideas we have, you know, on right. what, what stands in. So we talked about an appendix A, how do these, what is the legislative authority for each of these things now? What hurdles do we have? Um, do we need to be on firmer ground before we go out with ideas or does, um, does that's that it's chicken and it's a chicken and egg thing. Um, you know, so we well, might drop. Being very, someone who's that's, that's all I'm asking. Being very active in the league. Yeah. yeah. So being very active in the league and having been really the manager of the public outreach around the charter commission, you can book meetings or rooms. Now we won't be using any rooms probably, but um, 
with a with a to discuss a certain topic when that document isn't finished yet, but you know that it will be. Um, that happens all the time. And um, if we want the league to, for example, I mean, we just have to be the league, but if we want them to put some major energy into public participation in this uh, uh, forum or whatever we want to, whatever, whatever it turns out to be, they need some time, lead time. They're slow. The league is, you know, to its credit, really is uh, meticulous, and uh, they'll have to they'll have to go to the steering committee, which only meets once a month. Uh, it's a it's a slow process. Um, question: um, I periodically get uh, I signed up for some town email list, and I'll get announcements about forums and water bills and so forth. Uh, is that going to happen automatically in our case, or do we have to plan for that too to have a, a town, uh, an official town announcement go out? We have to plan that. We'll have to plan. But, but important also, if we want people to come, is we might want to reach out to some of the organizations in town uh, that want to, that might have an interest in it to spread the word. I'm not sure how many people get those town emails and. Uh, when you get them, you don't necessarily either open them or you open them and you see there's something you might want to do, but you don't put it on your calendar. And it's a, it's a very um, uh, light, it's, a, it's, it's what it is. That's, but, so answering Kathy's question, I feel strongly that we don't have to have the final document until uh, March, but we should be trying to pl plan these events or whatever they are. I guess I want to ask it a little different. I, I agree with you that we do we need to know, not that we have the final document, that this, because I will feel, um, since I feel like I steered it into the, we're not a full blown participatory budget, but yes, we want to carve out some money out of these sources. What if we can't? You know, what if we're back to the drawing board and we say, it would be read a whole lot simpler. We just want to carve fifty thousand out of somewhere town. Find find fifty thousand. But what yeah. our proposal our proposal might be uh, that we want to increase the robust participation in the things that already exist, and here's how it could be done. But we can yeah. cancel a, a forum. We can cancel. Okay. But it would okay. Be so so the, that answers my question. That we could come back to say, you know. We're not going to go this route, but here's some suggestions on way to go another route. That's fine. You know, just I wouldn't like to have, say cancel because content just disappeared. Um. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Um, but also, we might have controversy from these town officials. They might not agree with each other. That would be interesting. I don't want to, uh, John. I don't want to dive into it too much yet because I think it's it's in that planned public forums and other public outreach, but. I was always impressed by um, John Hornick's like fall housing forum, which I helped him plan last year. He just asks every organization that he can find um, to, he called it sponsor it, but there's no, it's not a monetary. It's just, they bring somebody to it. And so I'm sure, right. but structurally um, what I should have said is it, the beginning was information, and then all we did was break into smaller groups, which is a lot harder electronically. But I think we only have to be specific enough as in, we explain participatory budgeting, we explain our draft proposal, and then we say, who wants to talk about higher ed? And they go to a group. And they, and I think we, so it doesn't, I agree that it doesn't have to be finished product because I think we want that input at that level. Yeah, it, so, it can't be finished product because we're still right. seeking input. So it's right. not the final, it's not the final, it's it may be our, you know, working draft as we are thinking it's, we want to present it and hear public, what do you think of it, give us feedback so we can, can come up with our final. I really like that idea, John. I think it sounds great. And I think that, that Zoom has the capacity, I have never been on a Zoom that did that, it breaks out meeting rooms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've never done that. I just know there is that capacity. Um, and so if we can't be physically, you know, like you raise your hand to go 
And then I don't know whether you go into a different Zoom meeting and then someone. No, no. It's, you're automatically, I've done it. It's, we, we don't have to talk about it now, but it's seamless. It's tricky though, because it ends at a certain point and you just boom back into the big group, whether you're ready or not. It's you not like a real meeting there, where the facilitator right? comes in and says, one more minute. <laughs> <laughs> you're just taken back. But the other, that's, I think that's what John said is really important. Uh, and one of the outcomes, one of our best outcomes would be of this whole process that the public, the Amherst public, participates more in CPAC or writes sense, you know, submits more proposals or, or knows about it. Most people don't know about it at all. Yeah. Um, does that mean so we don't know our impact? Yeah. Yeah, I love I love that idea. You know, just the every organization is bringing people to this. I can't even imagine a Zoom meeting with more faces on it than I, and then I'm already seeing a council meetings, but I, I won't worry about that now. <laughs> groups like the Senior Center, they are passionate about town stuff and things like the dangerous sidewalks and uh, the, the Senior Center is a very important political group that hasn't flexed its muscle in town yet, in my opinion. Um, so that's, anyway, let's keep, do people agree with generally this timeline? Sure. Yep. So given that it's uh, 20 minutes to five, um, I'm su going to suggest that we not go over each of these bulleted points, or do you want to do that? I just, um, the, the very last item on the April one, can you go up? I. So the under, and, and this is build support for, that is assuming that I, I, I that people, I, I don't feel comfortable with saying that our goal is to build support for it. It's our goal is to get feedback from it for it rather than to build support and public. You know, we, that's what we're doing is getting uh, feedback. And to, so. Got it, excellent. Good catch. And maybe, maybe Liz, then it, it still ends with and revise propose, revise the draft or whatever, you know. Yeah, the, so again, it's, it's finalized proposal, which will then yeah. go to the council. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We do but want a proposal that we support as a as a commission. We do right. want to get to that point. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you know, the thing is you could unfortunately in this situation, we could have something that the public just all really loves, but you know, it doesn't work within the framework of our current current town government. And so well, even if we build public support for it and you know it and it doesn't work. Um that's that's something to keep in mind. Well, there are all sorts of things that we can talk about that might be a middle ground, like the pub, non-binding public referendum and the, anyway. Yeah. So uh, we have general agreement on this, is that correct? Yeah. Yep. I noticed that some people, uh, does anybody wanna to add to our, to help Liz add to our list of people to outreach? Anything here under number two? No, I don't think so. I, you know, I think she's, at least as I understood Liz's current task for next week is some ne next meeting is <laughs> some clusters. <laughs> it's to make a turkey if you must know. <laughs> yeah, um, for some clusters <laughs> of questions. So, um, so some yeah. of the questions may work for multiple people. Um, okay. okay, good. All right, I am going to flip back here to the agenda. Did that work on the screen? No. Are you seeing the agenda? You have to close this one no. first. Okay, thank you. Um, share. So uh, what we haven't done yet is discuss the participatory budgeting concepts. Um, I want to, uh, uh, do we want to do that now, given the time, or do we want to, uh, first of all, let, I'll thank especially Liz and John Fenske for contributing 
uh, to the draft and thank Kathy for continuing to kind of muscle it through. Did we do the brainstorming of the questions that I'm going to then be organizing and tweaking? Um, I think so. I thought I we, had we came up enough. with a couple of them, but. Okay. <laughs> Let me, uh, what, how do people want to spend the rest of this? We want to end the meeting at five, which is in uh, 17 minutes. How do people want to spend the rest of this meeting? Well, let's just we could send for a second, just to make sure that Liz has something to work. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can focus on the questions. I'm not sure I have a lot more to add to the draft until we um, talk with more folks. Yeah, and I just want to say a word on the draft. Liz, Liz sent me. She she phrased she phrased it very nicely, but she, she went, "Yikes! <laughs> it's got track changes all over it." Because I didn't I didn't send out a clean version, and it's got there were some comments she dropped in that I didn't address, like move a whole section up, and because I wasn't sure. But um, what I can do unless people have an objection to it, I can accept the track changes, and I can make a couple more things she suggested and then the draft will still be the same draft you see um, on the 7th um, and it will be clean um, so with uh, and I may do a um, if there are margin questions Liz's were comments and questions I'll extract them and do a cover page on here were some areas that we need to complete we need to focus on so that's the document, but on the questions to ask, I have some I could add now, and I'd also be willing to buy, what's today is Thursday, um, by the end of the day tomorrow, when I think about this a bit more, send more. So we could also say, see how far we can get now, and then everyone send more. Okay, if so that works. let me see if people agree that I we'll spend that's... our next 10 minutes or so um, developing the questions and we'll follow the procedure Kathy just outlined for getting more feedback on the uh, memo. And it's December, our next meeting is December 10th, not the 7th. And then the meeting after that is January 7th. Just to, if we all, I think we all agreed with that. Okay, so here I've managed to somehow <laughs> get this document back up that I hadn't even saved yet, but there it is. Save it, Meg, save it. <laughs> Oh, no, but I was so busy flipping to the other document. I'm going to save it. That's for sure. Save it. Okay, I'm ready to take some more. Would it make Oops, Would it make sense to um, have a question? Um, because so far, if we're just asking for one of um, these groups to, to uh, <clears throat> volunteer to, to to provide funds for this. I, I'm, the, 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 if the short answer is no, then we're then we're done. But um, should we have a question to, to ask that picks people's brains about how other ways to find money for this effort? But I I, I wouldn't agree with that because even if the answer is no, they could give us useful feedback on processes and how they work and where to go. Well, I, well, mean, I don't mean that. I just mean is it sh there's no. We're assuming we're going to carve out something. From these these existing sources, are, should we be asking folks if there's if there's something we're missing? If there's another, if there if there are other 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 sources we should be looking to? I'm, I'm sort of thinking about universities in that particular whether it's through philanthropic um, uh, grant writing or or perhaps the colleges would would just love to uh, see this effort on their own. Unlikely, but you know. Let's brainstorm questions now rather than discuss them because we have a short amount of time. Okay, I'll, I'll start. I tend to think in, in clusters. So I'm just gonna put questions I'd like to ask of the resident capital request that that a Paul and Paul and or Sean, you know, with, you know, I think we've said some little prelude. We're here because we're dealing with whatever. Um, one would be, um, what do you think are the current positives or negatives of the resident having a resident capital request? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, next. And then second, um, could the open period be open longer? Okay. Uh, I think that's something that's important to ask all three committees. Yep, yeah, so some of these I would do. The right, so that's period. just, all right, Hello. just comment. I'm gonna ask you, could the community participation officers help uh, uh, residents develop proposals. Um, and then what I would do, uh, Megan, that same or, or other staff, you know, so it might be right. this, you know, so if it's, mm -hmm. we had, we had one from a North Amherst person for a crosswalk, you know, what is a crosswalk cost? Guilford will know the answer to that. So could some, you know, is there a way of, you know, or other staff? Right, got it, okay. So these are questions for, we're gonna go back and pull some out for other groups too. These are for Paul, but we're also getting some others, okay? Okay. Keep going, well, Kathy. Would it be possible, <laughs> in your opinion, <laughs> to, announce a commitment to fund at least or up to, you know, or up to, and then X dollars of resident capital requests. Mm -hmm. right. You know, make that as an announcement that the, the and then why or why not? <laughs> yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Can't hey, wait. But, yeah, and I, I think those are my biggies. Um, you know, you've got, an, and then, um, you know, the, I open with that. I, I clearly, the first question follows some lead in, but the, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure the town sees this as to its, its advantage. And one of the answers I'm anticipating on B is there if someone proposes something and it gets funded or it gets approved the people who did it feel like they have an ownership of it even though it might now be the schools are executing it or dpw is executing it and then i think this is a positive that people feel attached to it but it's a pain in the neck for the other side on because they keep getting calls you haven't done it yet when are you going to do it how are you going to do it you know uh, where where if it's repair the roof they don't have so it's that positive and negative i i like so i i just i don't want to meg i didn't want to add that to that sentence I just, I don't want to lead in positives and negatives. Wait, wait take this out. On B. It's okay. We're just, we're brainstorming and I know what she's saying. So you know, I, I'm yeah. just saying I did that open-ended because I think there are some concerns about it right now. And I want to leave it positives and negatives. So I didn't have, I didn't have anything else major for this. Well, I guess the other could okay. be is how it's what is the current process of ranking? That was going to be mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And deciding priorities. So um, another I have, I don't know if it's duplicative, is could the town do it? This is not necessarily for uh, Paul, but for the uh, CPA for sure. Could the town do a better job uh, of helping residents understand uh, both the process for applying for, for example, CPA and the requirements? Can you just move that what over? I, could you move it to a new, uh, if we're going to do move it CPA, can you make a CPA list? Because I have this. Sure. I, this is the way my mind works. OK. Good. OK. OK, because I like this question that you're doing. All right, so um, could the town do a better job uh, or the CPA committee, could we do a better? Okay, 
what um okay other questions um i want to add repeat the could the open period be open longer okay and the other thought i had is i don't understand why the open period for resident capital and for CPA couldn't be open at the same, you know, a, over okay. overlapping time, because maybe something comes in as a resident proposal that could fit CPA or vice versa. Be at least at, at least overlapping time periods. Um, right now they're completely separate time periods. Yep. Right. Okay. Up here also, this another thing, better job of helping this. I'm just going to add another thing, which is knowledge of uh, which town agencies uh, need to be consult consulted. So Meg, were you, just sent, were you just sent to three different agencies with your one historic project? Yes, I think at least, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and the, yeah, I, I just had an experience. I mean, you know, it's obviously, I don't think we're going to be successful with CPA, which is neither here nor there, I think, but it was an eye opener in terms of as somebody who knew what the CPA was because of town meeting and being on the council and has a fairly sophisticated understanding of how to work systems. It was pretty difficult. Um, you know, and I can't imagine anybody just applying for CPA funding without um, and succeeding without um, a lot more support. But anyway. So then the other one I would have, um, and it may, maybe this goes in both, is what I was impressed when we looked at these other cities and towns is some of the tiny things that people came up with. You know, so could, could CPA provide examples of low cost projects that have been funded in the past or that could be potentially be eligible. Um, you know, so, you know, question I have, I mean, Holly, you know CPA, but if we did the North Commons and we didn't, and we came back for a second time, could people, could the stone bench that goes for someone to sit on in the commons be a CPA funded bench? <laughs> you know, so getting really small that we just want a bench in a different place or we want a table. Um, up by Puffer's Pond, there's a really cool place to sit and I have no idea who's funded it, but it's way up the north end of the pond. And I thought that would have been something that would have been a good resident proposal because if someone can't sit on the ground they can sit up high so it's examples of these small projects low cost right. projects yeah okay so um i want to be sure we have time for public comment and it's it's about four minutes to five i appreciate we could go longer if you all want to but we agreed that we try to stop at five do people have questions no, this gives me something to work this gives me okay, something great. to work with, and then also I'll, I'll re read through our draft and see if there's other blanks in there that that I can pull out and propose some some uh, question topics from there. And Liz, I would go for the the block grant a similar kind of some of these work for them too. Yep, yep. You know, but just the the first <laughs> things are different. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I I'll would just, just go ahead. I would just add an open ended question, and it might be a good one to start with of. If you had a magic wand, or if you could do, if you could run your committee differently, your outreach differently, what would you do? Or um, just to get them thinking really broadly. Yeah, I think that outreach questions are definitely um, important, and asking them what types of outreach they do, and what types of outreach they would suggest for something like this, because. You know, the, the only requirement for most of these is an ad in the public paper in your general area. And, you know, 
sure that works great. Who actually sits down and reads the paper every day anymore? Not very many people. So, you know, I know with CPA, we've done things on our website. Um, we are getting the Facebook page back up and running. I think that asking what they use for outreach and what they, you know, think could be utilized for outreach is a good question to ask all of them. Okay. All right, so Meg, send this to me um, and I will, I'll, I'll take a crack at it. Okay, and I will, you know, spell check and all that. Great. No so, need to, because uh, I'll change the wording anyway. Okay, okay. Um, thank you, everybody. So uh, now is the time for public comment. Let's see if I'm, I'm gonna- No attendees. There are no, no attendees. attendees. Okay, so uh, hearing none, we'll put it in the notes. We have no public comment. Um, uh, I hope someday we have public comment, but oh well. Um, are we any other business before we adjourn? Just a quick question, Meg. Are you gonna? How do I get a copy of this recording? Do you send it to me? Is that how it works? Yeah. Okay. I, I will ask Angela to send it to you. Okay. That's in the right. process. There also, uh, I'll send a link. Paul told me, and unbeknownst to me, the town has a YouTube tube site, the town of Amherst, and all these meetings that have been recorded, we're posting them there. I mean, um, we'll get. The town has one before it gets posted that could be sent back to all of us, but um, you can go to the YouTube site. All these Zoom meetings are being put up if someone remembers to do it. Interesting. If I'd known yeah. that, I would have combed my hair. <laughs> That's what I was just <laughs> thinking. <laughs> I said, oh! <laughs> yeah, you know, I missed a CPA one and Anthony said, oh, it's up, but here's the, you know, here's the first version of it before we posted it. So they are, they are posting them. Um, so I will find that link Paul sent to me. Uh, so are you going to do that, Kathy? Because I was going to ask Angela, but you're going to do that. No, well, ask Angela, there's, a, as I understand it, ask Angela about that, Meg, yeah, because. She can just send me the, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this Zoom format. If she can just send it to me, it'll just make it easier to do the minutes. Yeah, that she yeah. has it right away when we stop the recording, it goes into something and then they have to move it over to YouTube. So the YouTube isn't as fast. So Angela will have it before okay. YouTube. Okay. She often sends it to me the next day. That's great. So yeah, it's coming yeah, to the end I'll of the semester. It. So I got, I've got a lot of stuff going on, <laughs> but I'll get this done. Yeah, we well, have till December 10th, so. Okay. And so if, if anyone can read the Messi or, or the, later. So no, on just, the document, the, the windows are still open. If you have anything, if you just save all the current edits and you want to send, otherwise nothing will be new other than me trying to address some of Liz's excellent comments that I didn't do. Um, so it'll be the same draft, but okay. if anyone feels moved to do something more, Feel, feel, feel free. I won't get to it till next Friday uh, at, the, at the earliest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? So uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. I move. I move. Okay. Uh, John moves, Kathy seconds. Do we have to go around and everybody Vote. No, we can. You can just say the chair can say. Therefore, we're adjourned. Hearing no objections, we're adjourned. We're we're doing that in every other thing, Meg. So you can. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Therefore, we're adjourned. Uh, thanks, everybody. See you Thank on you. December tenth. Bye. Happy whatever Happy Thanksgiving you're going to have. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye. Thanksgiving, whatever that turns out to be. Bye. <laughs>